Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, Three Mile Island. It's been 30 years since the worst nuclear disaster in the U.S. Officials claim no one was hurt, but some local residents say the real impact of the accident, including deaths, was covered up to protect the nuclear industry. Earth Focus investigates. In 1979, a mechanical failure led to a partial core meltdown at Unit 2 at the Three Mile Island Nuclear Reactor near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. State, federal, and industry officials were unprepared to respond. Errors were made. Radioactivity was released. It was the worst nuclear accident in U.S. history. And it eroded public trust in the nuclear industry and set back nuclear power development for more than a decade. It probably came within a half hour to an hour of the total meltdown. Up to several million gallons of radioactive water were flushed right out of the core into the basement of the reactor, leaving about 75% of that core uh, uncovered. There have been health studies after health studies, including those done by the state of Pennsylvania, that have shown that there were no health effects from the Three Mile Island accident. The amount of radiation released from the plant during that accident was the maximum amount anybody could have received was equivalent to a chest x-ray. And that's still the official line. But some experts say that much higher levels of radiation escaped and that Three Mile Island continues to be the largest cover-up of an industrial accident in the U.S. I have seen friends in the Three Mile Island area suffer the consequences including loss of life, and live with very real psychological damage in addition to real illness. Something did happen here, that people did get cancers. Many have died. We know that there are statistically significant increases in cancer as a result of Three Mile Island. Yet the industry and the nuclear agencies continue to downplay the significance, say no one was harmed, no one was killed. And when the press says, comes out and says, well, nobody died around Three Mile Island, there are no problems, very few reporters then ask the person, well, what about Steve Wing's study? The implication of the study that we did of, of cancer incidents around Three Mile Island is that the radiation doses were much higher there than what the industry and the government reported both during the accident and the estimates have pretty much remained the same all, for all these years. And the estimates were initially made before they knew what was going on at that reactor, before they had gotten into the core and saw how much had melted and so on. The claims that no one was hurt rest on the premise that only low levels of radioactivity escaped from the plant, levels determined largely by government and industry. Dr. Wing found medical evidence to dispute this claim. What we saw was that the uh, cancer rates were elevated under the path of the plumes, uh, specifically lung cancer and leukemia. Elevated at rates two to 10 times higher downwind of the Three Mile Island reactor. If radiation emissions were as low as officials say, the increased number of cancers cannot be explained. We don't know how much radiation it actually does take to harm someone. In fact, the evidence is that any amount of radiation can harm anyone, given uh, biological makeup and where the radiation goes and what kind of radiation it is. There was a tremendous rise in both infant mortality and total mortality, not just in Harrisburg, but all over the northeastern United States, wherever these gases drifted. Local residents describe symptoms consistent with acute radiation sickness. We went out in the driveway and the air was filled with metal and we couldn't tell if we were breathing it or eating it. It was just everywhere. A metallic taste, hair loss, rashes on their skin, nausea. The burning of the nose, the lips, down the throat, in your chest, um, your eyes were burning. Uh, people later were talking about having diarrhea, sometimes nausea. A few people said bloody diarrhea. 
and studies of blood cells of people with symptoms of radiation exposure showed chromosomal abnormalities even years later. There is a particular type of chromosomal abnormality, the dicentric chromosome, that is specific to exposures to ionizing radiation. The levels of dicentric chromosomes in the people who reported these symptoms was still elevated many years, about 15 years, after the accident occurred in 1979. Abnormalities were reported in plants, and animals became ill, and some died. The normal cesarean rate for hogs and sheep and goats is one a year. We are now encountering two a week. The goats didn't even want to breed. And uh, the ducks, the eggs don't want to hatch. This uh, dandelion is a normal one, and this one is a, a mutation. It has multiple um, flower heads and a really flat, hollow stem. There are zinnias with color aberrations and malformed roses. Mary Stamos continues finding abnormal plants in her yard even today. There's three that are double and two that are normal. Same stem, but you got one of each. And this is the normal one. Our work continues to go for the most part ignored. And I believe it's because it doesn't, <clears throat> doesn't fit with the, the line or the story that not enough radiation got out to hurt anyone. There's no profit in telling people that things are, are going bad, particularly if you're the nuclear industry. And this is typical of the nuclear industry throughout its history. Uh, they have been um, practicing really cover-up and, and minimization and denial about the effects of radiation, and uh, largely because of cost reasons, but uh, for other reasons as well. The secrecy around the nuclear industry has been there uh, since its inception around the nuclear bomb. During the Cold War, the government engaged in constant and deliberate acts of public deception, misinformation, uh, in order to prosecute the nuclear arms race. This kind of mindset has washed over into the nuclear power program. It's sort of the what they don't know can't hurt us mentality. Nobody really knows how much radiation got out from Three Mile Island. Yet this information is vital to determining what the health consequences were. Some experts say radiation releases were 100 to 1,000 times higher than government and industry claim. So why the uncertainty? These plants are not prepared to monitor radiation levels or the reactors themselves in the presence of the disarray that occurs during a meltdown. And People are trying to figure out what's going on without enough information. The stack monitors broke down. They had uh, thermoluminescent dosimeters, which are essentially radiation badges that circled the plant, right? These, are, these de detect gamma radiation. They claimed that they, they, they saw nothing on these monitors, but I read their uh, records, and in fact, one monitor in the northwest quadrant, which is exactly where the wind patterns would have driven the worst of the radiation, did show excess radiation. And you know what they did? They went in and they said, well, it must have been a defective monitor. And they called it the Northwest Anomaly. Monitors at the plant went off scale when the accident happened. Plumes of higher radiation may have passed by undetected. And weather may have played a role. There was a temperature inversion. And conditions were very favorable for maintaining the integrity, the concentration of the radioactivity in these plumes, which were kept close to the ground. They were prevented from blowing out very quickly. A number of studies were done on the health impact of the accident. Most used official numbers for the amount of radiation released, and those numbers were low, making it difficult to link radiation emissions to cancer in local people. One study by Columbia University did find higher rates of cancer, but suggested that they could be related to stress. The authorities were saying that since not enough radiation had been released to cause any of these symptoms, it was 
evidence that people were having so much mental distress that they made themselves sick. But as I looked at the literature, it did not match with the reports in this area. President Jimmy Carter's commission looking into the accident at Three Mile Island also concluded that the major impact of the disaster on people was mental stress. Carter, a nuclear engineer by training, was closely advised by Admiral Hyman Rickover, who was in charge of the Navy's nuclear propulsion program, a major national security project, and keen on seeing the nuclear industry thrive. They were afraid that the public would become so frightened and angry with what they were doing and that because of the fact that people were being exposed without their knowledge and consent, things like that, that this would interfere with their ability to amass nuclear weapons. Dr. Wing reanalyzed the Columbia study on behalf of over 2,000 people suing the nuclear industry for health damages, but their case was never heard in court. Dr. Wing's findings were disallowed by a judge who ruled in favor of the nuclear industry on the grounds that there was not enough evidence to link radiation to health concerns. People died as a result of the Three Mile Island accident, and I've been wanting to have our day in court for people to have the justice that they deserve. The attorneys representing the plaintiffs at Three Mile Island uh, spent a large amount of money and uh, weren't even remotely able to match what the defense spent because, of course, the nuclear industry in the United States only exists because uh, the taxpayers cover all the insurance. Therefore, when a lawsuit occurs, the resources available to defend against a lawsuit are huge. Nevertheless, over $82 million was paid in out-of-court settlements by 2002. One of the recipients was Debbie Baker, who lived five miles away from the plant during the accident and had a son born with Down syndrome. I was such a patriotic person, but what I've learned is that the government has a way of covering things up, and, and to me, I think it, it's just shocking. It's just, that hurt the most. But as long as people did not die exactly at the time that that accident happened, they can always get away with saying nobody died from a nuclear accident. And that's not the truth. For some people who live in the shadow of the plant, things are back to normal. If there's an increase in cancer, it's more because of our lifestyle and not really because of Three Mile Island. But for many others who still live with a Geiger counter in their homes, the uncertainty about what really happened continues and their life will never be the same. After Three Mile Island, the NRC developed severe accident management guidelines to safeguard against future accidents. But 40% of nuclear power plants still have not trained workers in how to use them. The cleanup at Three Mile Island lasted 14 years and cost over $1 billion. Today, reactor number two is shut down. Reactor one remains operational until its license expires in 2034. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.